Well, thanks for clicking on to the Friday edition of Vogan's European Outlook. I was very nearly going to not do a video today because I'm running a little bit behind time, but I wanted to produce a video for my, my loyal um, subscribers and viewers because it was a wild old morning across the, uh, across many parts of the UK. In fact, I was going to say the north, but actually even um, further south we had the, and east we had some very, very strong wind gusts in excess of 80 miles per hour during the overnight period. This was the tree at the hotel my fiance Lindsay works at. Uh, I believe it or not, I actually managed to get underneath the tree with the car. It's, um, it's not a particularly high vehicle, but I do know that there was vans parked up uh, during the overnight that uh, could not get out of the driveway this morning to go to work because of this casualty of the very strong winds that we experienced across many areas last night. Those winds um, kind of eased as the day went on, but uh, boy, oh boy, we had quite the storm actually last night, if I'm being honest with you. Um, this is another road on the way into the village that I live in. And uh, yeah, some pretty wild conditions indeed. Current temperatures, uh, by the way, in, in the wake of the system, very mild across the south, 15, possibly a 16 somewhere in the southeast today, fresher in the back of that uh, low across the north, as you can see here. But uh, if we look at the pressure chart here and rewind the clock, you can see uh, what took place here. It was really the squeeze in the pressure gradient actually on the the kind of the the south and southwest <coughs> excuse me the south and southwest quadrant of that low <coughs> that really generated some incredible gusts actually um and you can see here this is the low as it passed to the north of the UK here some of these bends in the isobars that uh, indicated some transfer of very strong winds aloft down to the surface and uh, did this catch anybody off guard? Possibly. Um, th those wind gusts, uh, I think, were stronger than expected, if I'm being honest. And I did look at the pressure gradient at one point before the cold front reached. This this general vicinity right here actually concerned me somewhat that we could see some incredible gusts embedded within this, uh, this uh, pressure field here. And indeed, I think that did transfer east and generate the incredible gusts that we did see. Uh, but it was comparable, if I'm being honest, to what we seen back last February with those couple of back-to-back -back storms. And yet this was not a named storm by the UK Met Office. It was a yellow warning. You know, I've seen amber warnings. They've even seen red warnings that have generated less strong wind gusts. So who knows? But if we play it back through the sequence here, you can see the incredible gusts that we did experience. So, of course, they arrived in the Outer Hebrides first, then Sky, then the West Mainland, and then as that centre passed to the north, that's when we seen those incredible gusts. 10, 130 kilometres an hour, which is 80 miles per hour. I think the top gust was 81 miles per hour. Uh, several bridges shut. There was probably a disruption to flights, definitely a disruption to ferry services. And then as that uh, core of strongest winds passed through, we've seen the winds gradually easing, albeit that was still a windy afternoon across the board. <clears throat> Let's have a look at uh, Europe. And you see here that the strongest wind gusts now are focused over Denmark, as expected. And that is, of course, uh, the agency that uh, named this storm Otto in the first place. Temperatures across Europe are, as uh, you can see here, very mild across many areas of the continent, including the UK. Uh, any cold air, not particularly right home about uh, across Scandinavia and Russia. Uh, but the reason why we've seen such incredible warmth, by the way, I believe anyway, along with other aspects, but I think this is one of the primary culprits, the Manjulian Oscillation. Strong Phase 3 got stuck in that phase for a prolonged period of time. I think that has led to the very anti-cyclonic conditions that we've seen throughout the course of February so far, and bearing in mind we're on the 17th of the month now. And then it's uh, passed through phases four and five, which are again are mild phases. But look at this here. We're going into phase seven, eight, possibly into one as well. Is this the kick that we've had within the atmosphere? driven by this 
that has caused the storm. That that's by far the the, the worst conditions that we've seen all winter. Should that have been a named storm? I don't know. In terms of UK named storm, that is. I don't know what the script is with regards to other agencies naming it. And then does that mean that the UK can't name it? Or the Met Area can't name it? I don't know. I don't know what the rules are. Here's the current situation of the GFS. You can see here the um, auto uh, centred just on the south coast of Norway, Sweden. Very powerful winds on the southern flank, as you can see here. Here's the next system, by the way. Bear in mind, there is a little bit colder air associated with the rear of auto. You can see here that we've got the next feature moving in. That could bring some problematic snowfall to high routes of Scotland. Just high routes. And then we've got another feature that moves in, as you can see here, later in the weekend. But notice the storm track up towards Iceland. High pressure. There's the old... Good old high pressure that's been dominating the month of February. Notice that sticking its nose a little bit further north, but nothing to write home about in terms of temperature, of course. Looking at the GFS Ensemble, this is the 2 meter temperature anomalies here. Very mild across the board, as you can see here. Any systems coming up towards Iceland, that means that we're driving very mild conditions across the UK and Ireland here, as you can see. Nothing particularly anything to write home about. And then it turns a little bit colder, below average, as we move towards the second half of the week. And we'll look at that again, hopefully, tomorrow. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching. I do appreciate it. Please like, please share, please hit that subscribe button if you haven't already done so. And stay up to date with all that is going on. Bye for now.